Welcome back. On this International Women's Day, several groups took to the streets demanding that the government take more action to help working women. Secretary for Labor and Welfare Matthew Cheung says the administration will strengthen childcare services so that more mothers can join the workforce. Rani Samtani has the story. More than 30 members of the Confederation of Trade Unions marched from Chater Garden to the central government offices today. They called on the government to provide better working conditions for women. A lot of uh, working women are still facing discrimination, uh, sexual harassment in the workplace. So we hope to uh, have a woman-friendly working place. We think that the government uh, to, we should amend the uh, sex discrimination ordinance um, to cover the uh, service providers um, to, uh, against the uh, sexual harassment. Members of the Federation of Trade Unions also gathered at the central government offices. They urge the government to offer support for those who work and care for their families. And a women's rights group spoke out against what it sees as a shortage of daycare places and appealed to the government to provide a child care allowance to help low-income families. Secretary for Labor and Welfare Matthew Jung said the government will allocate more resources for child care services. He added that it will increase the number of places as well as extend the hours of after-school care to provide more support for working women. Jung, for his part, made clear the government has been trying to improve the working conditions of foreign domestic helpers following several recent abuse cases. We'll be stepping up surveillance of employment agencies in Hong Kong as well. We've got short-term, medium-term, long-term measures in hand uh, to tackle the situation and, and make sure that all helpers in Hong Kong are properly protected. And at the central government's liaison office, calls demanding the immediate release of Liu Xia. The wife of jailed Nobel Peace Laureate Liu Xiaobo is under house arrest in Beijing. Rani Samtani, TVB News. And in New York yesterday, advocates and supporters marched in front of the United Nations building, demanding an end to violence against women. In some countries, as many as 7 out of 10 women are beaten, raped and mutilated. More than 77 million girls worldwide are not enrolled in primary schools or secondary schools. These statistics are unacceptable. Today I support UN, Women for Peace, and I'm speaking to end violence against women. On to other news now. Police say they have smashed a syndicate involved in online fraud. 23 people were arrested. Rachel Lung reports. One of the suspects was brought to a flat in Jordan as part of the investigation. Police say the syndicate had completed 80 online transactions involving items such as computers, luxury watches, jewelry and used cars. The amount of money involved totaled $2.7 million. Officers believe most of the items have already been resold. Lam Xiu Wing of the Kowloon West Regional Crime Prevention Unit said the syndicate used young women posing as buyers to get in touch with the victims. They paid for the goods by check, but none of the checks turned out to be valid. Lam said they were either stolen or came from bank accounts that were opened with stolen Hong Kong IDs. 18 men and five women aged between 13 and 44 were arrested, among them the suspected mastermind of the syndicate, and an appeal by the police. Officers say the group recruited youngsters using online platforms, offering them ways to make quick money. And people are urged not to accept checks when it comes to online transactions. Rachel Ling, TVB News. Newsweek is making a return to the print form. The news magazine was back on store shelves after a failed attempt in 2012 to move to an all-digital format. The paper relaunch features an exclusive front-page story about a man the magazine said was the founder of Bitcoin. Newsweek outed Satoshi Nakamoto as the reclusive multi-millionaire father of the digital currency. Nakamoto has denied involvement with Bitcoin, but Newsweek is standing by its story. Newsweek decided two years ago to publish only online. But that venture failed and its new owner announced the magazine is going back to the new, or should we say old, print version. All right, Tony, over to you for sports. Yep, we got some NBA and we got some news about the Brazilian World Cup coming up and the Sochi Olympics. But let's start with the NBA.
A and the Red Hot Houston Rockets hosted the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers came into the game with the best record in the league, while the Rockets are moving up in the Western Conference standings. Jameson Wong has all the highlights. And that's it from us tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night. Cool today with one or two rain patches at 5 p.m. An easterly airstream was affecting the South China coast. Today's temperatures range from 14.2 to 16.2 degrees, and the current temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. 0.4 millimeters of rain has been recorded since midnight. So, Freddie, how's the weather tomorrow? Oh. Rather cool, cloudy to overcast with a few rain patches. Visibility will be rather low. Temperatures will range from 13 to 15 degrees. It will be cloudy with a bit of rain in the following few days. Tomorrow's air quality health index will range from low to moderate. And the maximum UV index forecast for tomorrow will be about 2. Now, here's the latest global weather update. Cloudy in Shanghai and Xiamen showers in Taipei. Showers in Guangzhou and Macau, cloudy in Chengdu. Sunny in Beijing, sunny intervals in Tokyo, cloudy in Seoul. Sunny intervals in Bangkok and Manila, sunny in Ho Chi Minh City. Sunny intervals in Kuala Lumpur, sunny in Singapore, showers in Jakarta. Sunny intervals in New Delhi and Mumbai, sunny in Karachi. Showers in Cairo, sunny intervals in Nairobi. Showers in Brisbane and Sydney, sunny in Melbourne, sunny intervals in Auckland. Cloudy in Toronto, sunny in New York. Rain in Vancouver, sunny in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Sunny in London, Paris, Amsterdam and Frankfurt, cloudy in Zurich. And 